The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, They will cease and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons. And they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand. For I myself shall give you wisdom in speaking, that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now and forever. Good morning, dear friends. Magandang umaga po. Pakibati din ng good morning ang ating mga kasama ngayong umaga. Beautiful Wednesday morning. Red Wednesday to our online parishioners. Thank you for being with us today. Red Wednesday is a day we remember all our brothers and sisters from different countries who are persecuted suffering according to the latest data that the acn has acn refers to the aid to the church and need it is the apostolate of the church that focuses on helping the persecuted christians according to their data there are around 387 million Christians all over the world who are, as I speak, as we speak, are suffering because of perhaps fundamentalists, extremists in their country, dictators, and those who are not so welcoming to the Christian faith. So according to ACN, Aid to the Church in Need, one out of seven Christians may suffer some form of persecution in the world today. One out of seven. Maybe not so deeply felt here in the country because we are majority Christians. But in other countries or even in some places in the Philippines, we know that Christians are not always welcome. Many of them are discriminated or are suffering greatly. St. Ignatius of Loyola, he once said, if one fears, he will never do anything great for God. If one fears men so much, he will never do anything great for God. All that one does for God arouses persecution. Para kay Ignatius of Loyola, ang lahat ng mga ginagawa ng mga Kristiyano ay laging nagdadala sa paghihirap, sa pasakit, laging nagdadala patungo sa pagsubok. And therefore, the reverse is also true. If your life is so easy, you are just cruising through life and smooth flowing, Maybe you're not a Christian. Maybe you have compromised your values already. Or maybe you have renounced your faith altogether. And that is why you have it all too easy in life. But Christianity, espousing the values of Christ, it will always lead us to some form of martyrdom. Pope Francis, he always says this, the age of martyrs is not yet over. Today we can say in truth that the church has more martyrs today than during the first three centuries when Christianity was outlawed. 
mas marami daw na kristyano ang pinapatay at pinahirapan sa mga panahong ito kesa nung mga unang tatlong daang taon na ang kristyanismo ay pinagbabawal. At anong mga paraan ng paghihirap ng mga kristyano ngayon? Maaaring tanungin natin. Ang paghihirap ng kalikasan ay paghihirap ng mga kristyano. Ang paghihirap ng mga nakararaming kapatid natin na, nag, na maralita ng mga kristyano din ay isang paraan ng paghihirap. Ang mga hindi tinatanggap sa mga simbahan, sa mga bahay, dahil sa kanilang pananalig o paninindigan ay mga kristyanong pinahihirapan. And therefore, we don't have to go to the Middle East, to Africa, or other parts of the world to say that Christians are persecuted. There are many people in our neighborhood, in our organization and community, in our parish or family, people who just want to obey Christ, who live, who want to live a good Christian life, and yet they're the ones persecuted. Look at the mothers who keep on reminding their children, Anak, kailan ka ba magsisimba? At sisinghala ng anak, ano bang pakailan mo sa akin? That's one Christian martyr over there. A mother who just wants her children to find faith. Or a father who is sacrificing so hard for his family and yet his family does not reciprocate his sacrifices in going abroad perhaps or doing a lot of menial jobs in order to support or sustain the family. That one father there is a suffering Christian. We don't have to go far around us. There are many people suffering because of the truth, because of their patience, patient endurance in the midst of the trials and hardships that their family facing. Ito yung pighati ng mga widows, ng mga balo, habang ang mga anak nila wala nang pakialam sa kanila. Ito yung pighati ng mga may sakit na wala nang dumadalaw sa kanila. Ito yung pighati ng mga desaparecido, ng mga magulang o mga kapatid na hindi na makita ang kanilang mga mahal sa buhay dahil dinukot for some reason or another. Ito yung paghihirap ng mga kapatid natin sa lansangan dahil wala silang mga tahanan o kabuhayan para sa sarili nila. Persecution of Christians is not just outside the country or in other parts of the world. Persecution is right here before us. All of us are going through some pain or suffering because of our faith, because of our values. Sabi po ni St. Augustine, Our pilgrimage on earth cannot be exempt from trials. We progress by means of persecution. We progress by means of trial. Ang isang kristyanong buhay o pamumuhay ay laging kaakibat ang krus na dinala rin ni Jesus para sa atin. Kakambal ng kristyano ang krus. Not because we are masochists who, who want to suffer and we take pleasure in it. We are Christians and we know that part of the package of our life is the cross. We must endure it. We must face it and carry it every day. Our pilgrimage on earth does not exempt us from the cross. That's from St. Augustine. So, we ask ourselves, what is the persecution or cross that I am carrying right now in my life that I ask the Lord to give me strength? What is the trial and hardship that I am going through and enduring right now and that makes me one with all the persecuted Christians all over the world? Um, pakitingnan nga ang katabi natin. Pakitanong nga. Anong cross ang kailangan nating dalhin ngayon? What is the cross that you have to endure today and every day of your life? If in one form or another you have persecution or suffering, then you can say to yourself, 
I am, I am enduring this pain and persecution for the sake of Christ. I am one with my brothers and sisters who are suffering all over the world. That, and I'd like to end with this. I went to Vietnam the other, uh, a few months ago. Yung staff natin pumunta rin yung ng Vietnam. So I was there uh, with, through, with, uh, to attend a seminar. And there was one priest, Vietnamese priest, who gave a talk to us. And he told us, the reason why Vietnam is flourishing right now as a church it's because of the martyrdom and suffering that they have gone through. And he himself said, I was imprisoned for 15 years. Kinulong siya ng gobyerno ng labing limang taon. At marami pang mga pari kagaya niya ang kinulong ng military government ng Vietnam. For a long time, the church was persecuted. And even to this day, it is not yet fully recognized. But because of this martyrdom and suffering of many Catholics and Christians in Vietnam, now the church is flourishing. The blood of the martyrs and persecuted is the seed of Christianity to flourish. Pinuntahan po namin, yung venue po namin ay isang seminaryo sa Vietnam. Ilan ng seminarista sa seminaryong yun? 600. Dito po, seminaryo natin dito sa Maynila. Ilan ng seminarista? Wala pang sandaan. Doon sa diocese na pinuntahan namin o local church, ang sabi nila, ilan ng pari ninyo? Isang libong pari. Isang maliit na diocese. Dito sa Maynila, ilan ng pari? 200. Persecution does not mean elimination of the faith. In fact, the opposite happens all the time. Persecution leads to more fervor in faith. And maybe we need to see life that way. When you have all things easy for you, maybe not, that's not the path of the Lord. The things, the more things are difficult for you, maybe the Lord is telling you, this is the path that I have taken and this is the path you must embrace. The path of persecution, it's hard, it's difficult, but it has something to teach us all the time. Kaya ito po mga pinagdadaanan nating pagsubok sa araw-araw. Huwag pong tingnan yung pagsubok na yan na pahirap o parusa sa atin. Ang mga pagsubok na yan, karamdaman, kawala ng pera o problema sa pamilya, ang mga pagsubok na yan pwedeng maging pintuan o daan yan patungo sa mas matatag na pananampalataya. Do not look at your crosses and trials as punishment. Look at them as paths for us to be more faithful and closer to the cross of Christ. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now and forever. Maraming salamat po sa inyong paglalos sa ating banalamisa. Thank you for being with us today. And to our online parishioners, thank you for praying with us. Sa araw na ito, we join all the, Christian, all, all the Christians all over the world for all the persecuted Christians. Marami po sila. May kausap po ako lately no, na isang Christian sa Bethlehem. I think those of you who have been to the Holy Land, may nakaibigan po akong may-ari ng store sa Bethlehem no, na isang Kristiyano. Sabi niya sa akin ay, Father, kailan po kayo pupunta dito? When are you coming? Sabi ko, maybe in the end of time we will come back. No? At nakakalungkot, no? Nakakalungkot dahil hindi na tayo makapunta ng Holy Land. No? Ang dami pa naman sa inyo gusto mag-Holy Land, no? Pero hindi tayo makapunta. Bakit? Dahil nga sa uh, gera at sa kawala ng pagkakaisa. So we pray that all over the world, whatever religion, whatever faith denomination, we may all learn to, li to live as brothers and sisters belonging to the same Father. 
the Lord be with you and with your spirit and may our loving God bless you and your family the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen our Mass has been offered go in peace to love and serve the Lord thanks be to God